Chapter 4 Distribution of Oceans and Continents In the previous chapter, you have studied the interior of the Earth. You are already familiar with the world map. You know that continents cover 29% of the surface of the Earth and the remainder is under oceanic waters. The positions of the continents and the ocean bodies as we see them in the map have not been the same in the past. Moreover, it is now a well-accepted fact that oceans and continents will not continue to enjoy their present positions in times to come. If this is so, the question arises, what were their positions in the past? Why and how do they change their positions? Even if it is true that the con continents and oceans have changed and are changing their positions, you may wonder as to how scientists know this. How have they determined their earlier positions? You will find the answers to some of these and related questions in this chapter. Continental Drift Observe the shape of the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean. You will be surprised by the symmetry of the coastlines on either side of the ocean. No wonder many scientists thought of this similarity and considered the possibility of two Americas, Europe and Africa, to be once joined together. From the known records of history of science, it was Abraham Ortelius, a Dutch map maker, who first proposed such a possibility as early as 1596. Antonio Pellegrin drew a map showing the three continents together. However, it was Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist, who put forth a comprehensive argument in the form of continental drift theory in 1912. This was regarding the distribution of the oceans and the continents. According to Wegener, all the continents formed a single continental mass and mega oceans surrounded the same. The supercontinent was named Pangaea, which meant all earth. The mega ocean was called Panthalassa, meaning all water. He argued that around 200 million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea began to split. Pangaea first broke into two large continental masses as Laurasia and Gondwana land, forming the northern and the southern components respectively. Subsequently, Laurasia and Gondwana land continued to break into various smaller co continents that exist today. A variety of evidence was offered in the support of the continental drift. Some of these are given below. Evidence in support of the continental drift The matching of continents, jigsaw fit. The shorelines of Africa and South America facing each other have a remarkable and unmistakable match. It may be noted that the map produced during using a computer program to find the best fit of the Atlantic margin was presented by Bullard in 1964. It proved to be quite perfect. The match was tried at 1,000 fathom line instead of the present shoreline. Rocks of same age across the oceans The radiometric dating methods developed in the recent period have facilitated facilitated correlating the rock formation from different continents across the vast ocean. The belt of ancient rocks of 2,000 million years from Brazil close matches with those from western of Africa. The earliest marine deposits along the coastline of South America and Africa are of the Jurassic Age. This suggests that the ocean did not exist prior to that time. Delight it is the sedimentary rock formed out of deposits of glaciers. The Gondwana system of sediments from India is known as is known to have its counterparts in six different land masses of the southern hemisphere. At the base, the system has thick delight indicating extensive and prolonged glaciation. Counterparts of the succession are found in Africa, Falkland, Island, Madagascar, Antarctica and Australia. Overall resemblance of the Gondwana type sediments clearly demonstrates that these land masses had remarkably similar histories. The glacial tiltalite provides unambiguous evidence of paleoclimates and also of drifting of continents. Placer deposits The occurrence of rich placer deposits of gold in the Ghana coast and the absolute absence of source rock in the region is an amazing fact. The gold-bearing veins are in Brazil and it is obvious that the gold deposits of the Ghana are derived from the Brazil plateau 
when the two continents lay side by side. Distribution of fossils When identical species of plants and animals adapted to living on land or in fresh water are focused in either side of the marine barriers, a problem arises regarding accounting for such distribution. The observation that lemures occurs in India, Madagascar and Africa led some to consider a contiguous landmass Lemuria linking these three landmasses. Mosasaurus was a small reptile and adapted to shallow brackish water. The skeletons of these are found only in two localities, the southern Cape province of South Africa and Irava formations of Brazil. The two localities are presently 4,800 kilometers apart with an ocean in between them. Force for drifting Wegener suggested that the movement responsible for the drifting of the continents was caused, was caused by pole fleeing force and tidal force. The polar fleeing force relates to the rotation of the Earth. We are aware of the fact that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It has a bulge at the equator. This bulge is due to the rotation of the Earth. The second force that was suggested by Wegener, the tidal force, is due to the attraction of the Moon and the Sun that develops tides in oceanic waters. Wegener believed that these forces would become effective when applied over many million years. However, most of scholars consider these forces to be totally inadequate. Post-drift studies It is interesting to note that for continental drift, most of the evidence was collected from the continental areas in the form of distribution of flora and fauna or deposits like delight. A number of discoveries during the post-World War II period added new information to geological literature, particularly the information collected from the ocean floor. Mapping provided new dimensions for the study of distribution of oceans and continents. Convectional Current Theory Arthur Holmes in 1930s discussed the possibility of convection currents operating in the mantle portion. These currents are generated due to re radioactive elements causing thermal differences in the mantle portion. Holmes argued that there exists a system of such currents in the entire mantle portion. This was an attempt to provide an explanation to the issue of force on the basis of which contemporary scientists discarded the continental drift theory. Mapping of the ocean floor Detailed research of the ocean configuration revealed that the ocean floor is not just a vast plain, but it is full of relief. Expeditions to map the oceanic, expeditions to map the oceanic floor in the post-World War II period provided a detailed picture of the ocean relief and indicated the existence of submerged mountain ranges as well as deep trenches, mostly located closer to the continent margins. The mid-oceanic ridges were found to be most active in terms of volcanic eruptions. The dating of the rocks from the oceanic crust revealed that the fact that they are much younger than the continental areas. Rocks on either side of the crest of oceanic ridges and having equidistant locations from the crest were found to have remarkable similarities both in terms of their constituents and of their age. Ocean Floor Configuration In this section, we shall note a few things related to the ocean floor configuration that help us in the understanding of the distribution of continents and oceans. You will be studying the details of ocean floor relief in Chapter 13. The ocean floor may be segmented into three major divisions based on the depth as well as the forms of relief. These divisions are continental margins, deep sea basins and mid-ocean ridges. Continental margins. These form the tr transition between continental shores and deep sea basins. They include continental shelf, continental slope, continental rise and deep oceanic trenches. Of these, deep oceanic trenches are the areas which are of considerable interest in so far as the distribution of oceans and continents is concerned. Abyssal Plains these are extensive plains that lie between the continental margins and mid-oceanic ridges. The abyssal plains are the areas where the continental sediments that move beyond the margins get deposited. Mid-oceanic ridges 
This forms an interconnected chain of mountain system within the ocean. It is the longest mountain chain on the surface of the earth through those submerged under the oceanic waters. It is characterized by a central rift system at the crest, a fractionated plateau and flank zone all along its length. The rift system at the crest is the zone of intense volcanic activity. In the previous chapter, you have been introduced to this type of volcanoes as mid-oceanic volcanoes. Distribution of Earthquakes and Volcanoes Study the maps showing the distribution of seismic activity and volcanoes, given in the figure. You will notice a line of dots in the central parts of the Atlantic Ocean most parallel to the coastlines. It further extends into the Indian Ocean. It bifurcates a little south of the Indian subcontinent with one branch moving into East Africa and the other meeting a similar line from Myanmar to New Guiana. You will notice oceanic ridges. The shaded belt showing another area of concentration coincides with the Alpine Himalayan system and the rim of the Pacific Ocean. In general, the foci of the earthquake in the areas of mid-oceanic ridges are at shallow depths, whereas along the Alpine Himalayan belt, as well as the rim of the Pacific, the earthquakes are deep-seated ones. The map of volcanoes also shows a similar pattern. The rim of the Pacific is also called rim of fire due to existence of active volcanoes in this area. Concept of sea floor spreading As mentioned above, the post drift studies provided considerable information that was not available at the time Wegener put forth this concept of continental drift, particularly the mapping of the ocean floor and the paleomagnetic studies of rocks from oceanic regions revealed the following facts. Number one, it was realized that all along the mid-oceanic ridges, volcanic eruptions are common and they bring huge amounts of lava to the surface of the earth. Number two, the rocks equidistant on either side of the crest of mid-oceanic ridges show remarkable similarities in terms of period of formation chemical compositions and magnetic properties. Rocks closer to mid-ocean oceanic ridges have normal polarity and are the youngest. The age of the rocks increases as one moves away from the crest. Number three, the ocean crust rocks are much younger than the continental rocks. The age of rocks in the oceanic crust is nowhere more than 200 million years old. Some of the continental rock formations are as old as 3,200 million years. Number four, the sediments on the ocean floor are unexpectedly very thin. Scientists were expecting if the ocean floors were as old as the continent to have a complete sequence of sediments for a period of much longer duration. However, nowhere was the sediment column found to be older than 200 million years. Number five, the deep trenches have deep-seated earthquake occurrences while in the mid-oceanic ridge areas, the quake foci have shallow depths. These facts and a detailed analysis of magnetic properties of the rocks on either sides of the mid-oceanic ridges led Hess in 1961 to propose his hypothesis known as seafloor spreading. Hess argued that constant eruptions at the crest of oceanic ridges caused the rupture of oceanic crust and the new lava wedges into it, pushing the oceanic crust on either side. The oceanic floor thus spreads. The younger age of the oceanic crust as well as the fact that the spreading of one ocean does not cause the shrinking of the other made Hess think about the consumption of the oceanic crust. He further maintained that the ocean floor that gets pushed due to volcanic eruptions at the crest sinks down at the oceanic trenches and gets consumed. Plate tectonics Since the advent of the concept of sea floor spreading, the interest in the problem of distribution of oceans and continents was revived. It was in 1967 Mackenzie and Parker and also Morgan independently collected the available ideas and came out with another concept termed plate tectonics. A tectonic plate, also called lithosphere plate, is a massive irregularly shaped slab of solid rock 
generally composed of both continental and oceanic lithosphere. Blades move horizontally over the asthenosphere as rigid unit. The lithosphere includes the crust and top mantle with its thickness range varying between 5 and 100 kilometers in oceanic parts and about 200 kilometers in the continental areas. A plate may be referred to as the continental plate or oceanic plate depending on which of the two occupy a larger portion of the plate. Pacific plate is a largely is largely an oceanic plate whereas the Eurasian plate may be called a continental plate. The theory of plate tectonics proposes that the Earth's lithosphere is divided into seven and some minor plates. Young fold mountain ridges, stretches, trenches and or fold surround these major plates. The major plates are as follows. Number 1. Antarctica and surrounding oceanic plate. Number 2. North American with western Atlantic floor separated from South American plate along the Caribbean islands plate. South American plate. Number 3. South American plate. Number 4. Pacific plate. Number 5. India, Australia, New Zealand plate. Number 6. Africa with the Eastern Atlantic Floor Plate. Number 7. Eurasia and the adjacent Oceanic Plate. Some important minor plates are listed below. Number 1. Cocos Plate. Between Central America and Pacific Plate. Number 2. Nazca Plate. Between South America and the Pacific Plate. Number 3. Arabian Plate. Mostly the Saudi Arabian landmarks. Number 4. Philippine Plate between the Asiatic and the Pacific Plate. Number 5. Caroline Plate between the Philippine and the Indian Plate. The Indian Plate means north of North New Guinea. Number 6. Fuji Plate northeast of Australia. These plates have been constantly moving over the globe throughout the history of the earth. It is not the continent that moves as believed as Wegener. Continents are part of the plate, and what moves is the plate. Moreover, it may be noted that all plates without exception have moved into the ge geological past and shall continue to move in the future as well. Wegener had thought of all the continents to have initially existed as a supercontinent in the form of Pangaea. However, Later discoveries reveal that the continental masses resting on the plates have been wandering all through the geological period, and Pangaea was a result of converging of different continental masses that were part of one or the other plates. Scientists using the paleomagnetic data have determined the positions held by each of the present continental landmass in different geological periods. Positions of the Indian subcontinent is traced with the help of the rocks analyzed from Nagpur area. There are three types of plate boundaries. Divergent boundaries. When new crust is generated as the plates pull away from each other, the sites where the plates move away from each other are called spreading sites. The best known example of divergent boundaries is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. At this, the American plates is or are separated from the Eurasian and African plates. Convergent boundaries. Where the crust is destroyed as one plate dived under another, the location where sinking of a plate occurs is called a subduction zone. There are three ways in which convergence can occur. These are number one, between an oceanic and continental plate, number two, between two oceanic plates, and number three, between two continental plates. Transform boundaries. Where the crust is neither produced nor destroyed as the plates slide horizontally past each other, transform faults are the planes of separation generally perpendicular to the mid oceanic ridges. As the eruptions do not take all along the entire crest of the same time, there is a differential movement of a portion of the plate away from the axis of the earth. Also, the rotation of the earth has its effects 
on the separated blocks of the plate portions. Rates of plate movement The strips of normal and reverse magnetic field that parallel the mid-oceanic ridges help scientists determine the rates of plate movement. These rates vary considerably. The Arctic Ridge has the slowest rate and the East Pacific rise near Easter Island in the South Pacific about 3,400 kilometers west of Chile has the fastest rate. Force of the plate movement At the time that Wegener proposed his theory of continental drift, most scientists believed that the Earth was a solid motionless body. However, concepts of seafloor spreading and the unified theory of plate tectonics have emphasized that both the surface of the Earth and the interior are not static and motionless but are dynamic. The fact that the plates move is now a well-accepted fact. The mobile rock beneath the rigid plates is believed to be moving in a circular manner. The heated material rises to the surface, spreads and begins to cool, and then sinks back into deeper depths. This cycle is repeated over and over to generate what scientists call a convection cell or convective flow. Heat within the earth comes from two main sources, radioactive decay and residual heat. Arthur Holmes first considered this idea in the 1930s, which later influenced Harry Hess thinking about seafloor spreading. The slow movement of hot, softened mantle that lies below the rigid plates is the driving force behind the plate movement. Movement of the Indian plate The Indian plate includes Peninsula India and the Australian continental portions. The subduction zone along the Himalayas forms the northern plate boundary in the form of continent. Continent convergence. In the east, it extends to Rakinyoma mountains of Myanmar towards the island arc along the Java Trench. The eastern margin is spreading site lying to the east of Australia in the form of Oceanic Ridge in southwest Pacific. The western margin follows Kithar mountain of Pakistan. It further extends along the Makrana coast and joins the spreading site from the Red Sea Rift southeastward along the Kagos Archipelago. The boundary between India and Antarctic Plate is also marked by Oceanic Ridge, running in roughly west-east direction and merging into the spreading site a little south of New Zealand. India was a large island situated off the Australian coast in a vast ocean. The Thetis Sea separated it from the Asian continent till about 225 million years ago. India is supposed to have started her northward journey about 200 million years ago at the time when Pangaea broke. India collided with Asia about 40 to 50 million years ago, causing rapid uplift of the Himalayas. The positions of India since about 71 million years till the present are shown in the figure. It also shows the position of Indian subcontinent and the Eurasian plate. About 140 million years before the present, the subcontinent was located as south as 50 degrees south latitude. The two major plates were separated by the Thetis Sea and the Tibetan block was closer to the Asiatic landmass. During the movement of the Indian plate towards the Eurasian plate, a major event that occurred was the outpouring of lava and the formation of Deccan traps. This started somewhere around 60 million years ago and continued for a long period of time. Note that the subcontinent was still close to the equator from 40 million years ago and thereafter the event of formation of the Himalayas took place. Scientists believe that the process is still continuing and the height of Himalayas is rising even to this date. End of chapter 4